I like, I kind of like Terminal 18 or Love Layover. I like love those. Terminal 18. I actually love Terminal 18. No, but it's gonna happen. Right. I think Holy. there's a there's play on words. Terminal yeah. 18 is a lucky number, too. Hello, and welcome to the American Theater Wings Network for Emerging Leaders in the Theater. For tonight's panel, Strategy Savvy, a look inside theater content creation. Uh, my name is Melissa Cabrero. I'm the program associate here at the Wing. Uh, we're so glad that you're all able to join us for this really exciting and interactive panel, uh, whether you're a new or a returning network member. Um, we've got educators, students, program alum, as well as emerging and established industry professionals joining us from across the country tonight. And now I'm pleased to introduce my colleague, Alicia. Hello, I am Alicia Vaninchak. I am a programs associate at The Wing. Uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, the Network for Emerging Leaders in the Theater is one of The Wing's educational and professional development programs, which fosters a supportive and creative community for arts administrators and managers in our field. Through the network, aspiring students and interns and young professionals can connect with and learn from panels of esteemed industry colleagues, theater companies, and other leaders in the New York and national theater scenes. The American Theater Wing is a nonprofit organization, and we sustain ourselves and programs such as the network uh, on, contr on charitable contributions. Uh, if you are in a position to make a contribution, please visit americantheaterwing.com and click on the donate button. If you are not in a position to donate, we totally understand these are difficult times. Uh, when we release this network recording on YouTube and Facebook, we would so appreciate if you would share the video with your friends, leave a like or a comment, and invite others to our next meeting so we can continue to help spread the importance of theater and the power of the arts. And so without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce our guest moderator and wonderful colleague. He is the Senior Director of Digital Content Marketing and Strategy here at The Wing, and he's Ian Weiss. So as uh, Ian appears on screen, hi. hi. <laughs> hey, Ian. Um, as Ian appears on screen, I just want to take a few moments to share some of his incredible work. Uh, Ian's developed digital strategy and content for Broadway, Off-Broadway, and live entertainment over the last 12 years at The Wing for several Broadway agencies and as an independent contractor. He's won two Webby Awards for his social strategy work on the 2015 Tony Awards and a 2014 Webby honoree for his work on the Tony Awards second screen companion site. Additionally, he was nominated for two Daytime Emmy Awards, two Webby Awards, and won several Telly Awards for producing our long-running documentary series, Working in the Theater. He's produced the documentary Up Heartbreak Hill, which premiered on PBS's Point of View series in 2011. He's also worked as a producer and casting director for hundreds of TV and radio spots. He's done it all, and we're so glad to have him as our moderator tonight. Take it away, Ian. Well, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. I actually haven't heard my bio be read out loud, so there you go. Really sweet. <laughs> thank you. Really <laughs> impressive. Um, Thank you. Thank you. I'm extremely excited to welcome everyone again um, to talk about our amazing panel, um, Strategy Savvy, A Look Inside Theater Content Creation. Um, I'd like to invite our entire panel to come on screen as I introduce everyone. So <laughs> first, I'd like to introduce uh, Crystal Chase. Uh, Crystal Chase is a digital content producer and strategy consultant. Uh, she bridges the gap between digital and traditional marketing. Crystal is an expert at optimizing the customer experience online and offline, and she has over 12 years experience working at various agencies. I know this because I've worked with her at several of them. Um, she has produced uh, strategy and online content and fan activation for shows such as Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, Empire Outlets, Betrayal, Once on this Island, The Inheritance, many, many more. I've worked with her in shows like Fela and Phantom and Les Mis and The Nance. Um, she's also an incredible producer, so thank you for being with us, Crystal. 
Um, Aaron Coleman is currently an Associate Creative Director at AKA NYC. He has 18 years of experience creating and writing strategic campaigns across digital print and broadcast for many shows and, and live entertainment. I think he's worked at almost every agency there is on Broadway. Um, so um, only three. recent credits are The Inheritance, Once on the Silent, uh, War Paint, Oh Hello. Um, although if there's a Broadway show that you like or off Broadway or uh, a regional show, Aaron has probably worked on it in some capacity. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with him at Sereno Coin where we have done many pitches and brainstorm sessions together. Um, he's also an incredible playwright, so welcome, Aaron. Uh, Jim Glaub is a marketer extraordinaire, a creative lead, and a producer, um, and uh, of video content internationally, uh, Broadway, Off-Broadway, West End, you name it. He was my partner in crime on the Tony Awards Digital Strategy for many years, which we won the two Webby Awards for. Um, he also completely transformed the digital content on the Olivier Awards, so when you look at the Olivier's digital content, a lot of that has to do with Jim. Uh, he's currently the founder of Super Awesome Friends, which is a strategic digital and content experience company where he works on shows like Company and Girl from the North Country. Um, we've also worked together on many shows, too many to name. Um, he's also a wonderful member of the American Theatre Wing Advisory Committee. So Jim, thank you for being part of this panel. Thank you, what an honor, what an honor. What so, great introductions, oh my gosh. Yeah, you, you, you did as well. Boy. So I, for those familiar with the network panels, um, I really wanna do something a little different tonight and we're a truly interactive bunch. And because the four of us have worked together um, in this actual um, type of work, right? Um, I wanted to, um, to prepare something that our audience could, could engage with us on, which is a brainstorm session. But before we get there, um, because we've all been sort of away from each other, I wanted to sort of delve into everyone's experience um, with, um, with watching content and ingesting content right now, and also a little bit before, uh, before the shutdown. First poll is live. Right, and yeah, and that just very quickly is what platforms are you watching theater content on the most during the shutdown? Right, and so for this one, I believe you can fill out multiple selections. Um, so let us know where you're, where before the shutdown you were, you were watching content. For those watching later on Facebook and YouTube, we will have a poll link as well, and we'll get those results as well. Great, so it seems YouTube is, is a big winner, 78%, <laughs> next followed by Instagram and Facebook. So um, that's interesting and not, not that surprising. Okay, uh, the next Come one. on, TikTok, we got some TikTokers <laughs> out there. Come on. <laughs> Anyone, just me? Okay. I am a fan of TikTok, Jim. Uh, follow me, super awesome friends, <laughs> see you there. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then our uh, second question is, what types of theater content did you watch the most before the shutdown? Keyword being before. Pause that and share the results very quickly. Great, is everyone seeing the results on their screen? Great, so live performances and behind the scenes seem to be the most. Again, not that surprising. Um, live performances were recorded very easily, obviously, when we could be live, okay? All right. And the next poll. Content during the shutdown. What types of theater content are you watching during the shutdown? And there are the results. Great. So you, this is a good group to, uh, to, for panels to win because we're on a panel. Um, fundraising concerts and music videos were, were sort of next in line and that sort of makes sense. There's been a lot of fundraising concerts and music videos, which are often included in the concerts as well. So the types of content has, has changed a little bit, although there are some repetition within it. So that's really interesting. And then the last uh, um, poll, I'm just sort of curious. So this is when we return to the theater, what type of show are you most interested in seeing? I'm getting a sneak peek of what everyone's answer is. And, and this one, I believe you could just fun. do one. Yeah. All right, let me share that. And that is the correct is. answer. 
So that that is a great answer, um, and not surprising oh, at all. <laughs> <laughs> Anything, please. <laughs> great. Give me the feeling. I'll take it. So, um, since you're with four people that legitimately brainstorm together with real clients for Broadway shows, off Broadway shows, regional shows, West End shows. Um, we thought it might be interesting for you to see how we collaborate together. Um, so what I wanted to do was begin with um, a prompt. So no one said they wanted to see, um, in particular, a musical comedy, but I thought, but they said they didn't care. So this is a great. So let's start with, let's say that there's a new musical comedy coming to Broadway. Um, and we're going to let you, the audience, so use the chat feature to chime in for a few things. Um, but this new, there's going to be a new show. And again, this is fictitious, so this is not real, so don't look for this anywhere. But in this uh, fantasy world, um, uh, let's say Kirsten Childs is the, is the composer, uh, OB winning Kirsten Childs, two-time Larson winning, just had to plug that for the American Theater Wing. Um, there's a new director. Uh, it's starring Norm Lewis, Lindy, Lindsay Mendez, and Haley Kilgore. Love and the, that. And, and the basic premise is that it's the story of three people who needed an airport. There's a canceled flight, and they have to share a rental car to, um, to get to where they're going. And then there's maybe some backstory meets, you know, the present day, kind of like Orange is the New Black situation. <laughs> so that's sort of the prompt we're given. And sometimes we are given just that limited amount of information on a show, especially when it's, you know, a little hush hush, or if it's um, a brain, a pitch, right? A brainstorm for a pitch. So the show is not announced in any way. Um, so before we really get into it, um, why don't you guys tell me like, what goes into a brainstorm when we start to meet? Like what, what information do we need or um, that we may have or may not have? What sort of do we start to talk about? I mean, I think one of the big things is like the collaboration of, of each other. I think it's important that, that some rules are set at the beginning for a brainstorm, right? Like that, that, that there is no, that the best idea wins. There are, uh, anything can be said as long as you're not um, degrading anyone else or jumping over anyone else and everyone has a voice at the table. So that's, I think, most important in regards to a really successful creative brainstorm. Uh, oh, Crystal, you're muted. Hashtag muted. There we go. I'm back. Um, she back. I think another important thing is a really clear brief on what is expected um, as far as are we thinking about marketing just in general and to who we're thinking about that marketing. Because sometimes that gets to be really unclear. Um, you know, and when you have a room filled with varying producers, you want to make sure that you're all on the same page with who your target market is. Um, because obviously there's a traditional Broadway audience, but sometimes you may have a producer that wants to go in another direction. So a clear brief on who we're targeting, when, and uh, most importantly, how much do we have to spend? That's very key. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I think there's also a, um, we get as familiar with the show as possible. Um, we will read the script, listen to demo music, um, go, if, if there's a production out of town, we'll go see the production out of town. If it's just a workshop, we'll go see the workshop. So we're all very much familiar with the, 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 the tenor of the piece. And, and then from that, uh, we figure out what are the uh, commercial selling you know, principles that we want to use to entice audiences to come see the show. And that then becomes our creative strategy. Yeah, there's definitely, um, with that, from the, from the principles, uh, so many things can be developed. W one of the things that I really love doing is a SWAT, we all love doing is a SWAT, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. It just help us, uh, helps us understand what the show has and what the show hasn't and what we can work with. Um, and to, to Aaron's point, the principles are like so good. It's, it actually should be applied to almost every brand and brainstorm. It's like, what are the things you believe in? Yeah. What are the things that this show believes in? And if you stick to those principles, what's great is that you actually know what to do and what not to do. You know where to not go, like what, what things to pass on, what, what areas to not focus on. Uh, those guiding principles are really key to the success. And then the, my favorite part is, I mean, I love tone and voice. That's another way where we get into like, what is the actual, 
is it what's the voice is it confident what are we are we are we are we uh, are we kind of chill are we mysterious or whatever it is and then my favorite is the tactics and that's like how are we going to take all those things and 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 get it in front of as many people as possible one other thing that i will add is it's really important to keep things fun and light right mm. I think was talking about being respectful and best idea wins but i think you know when you're brainstorming and you feel really frustrated you kind of have to go back to when you were a child and just having fun and being yeah. imaginative and sky's the limit because that's when you can really sort of distill your ideas but you kind of have to start you know in the clouds a little bit just have some fun and really find your way um down the rabbit hole of what is the best idea but if you come from it with like oh i gotta come up with an amazing idea most of the time it never comes yeah it I, never happens I, I i totally agree and the initial at least for the initial brainstorm the ideal situation is just like whatever crazy idea comes to mind don't think about you know budget don't think about you know if it's too wacky you know just just let it all come out because then we can narrow it down you know there's always a person in the room who says but we can't do that because that's too much money or that's too crazy or they won't let you for the initial brainstorm you just have to let it all go out and then and then come back to the strategy and the practical matters afterwards yeah it's almost like a game of improv right where you say yes and and yeah. you just sort of keep going yes and, so and. We, right and with that I, with with that in mind i think I think it would be a good idea. Oh, sorry, Jim. Were you gonna no, say? I was like, I have an idea that like, Crystal and I was inspired about, about our show. Are we, can we start? Can we start? Let's, let's, what, do let's, we have a title? Go. Do we have a title? Oh, we, we don't, don't have, have a title. title. What's our title? So, team. Let's look at our participants. Um, chat, chat teams. We yeah. Need, we need Anyone watching live, um, help us come up with a name. So you know it's a musical comedy. We know it's starring Norm Lewis, Lindsay Mendez, and Haley Kilgore. We know it's about three strangers in an airport and they come together. Any names, we'll take anything. And it's, and it's like, we know it's a good show. Like, let's just, let's just like, we know it's a great show. Yeah. Um, and by the way, this would never <laughs> happen in a million years. Like Kirsten Childs would name her show. Well, you know, I, I, I have to be honest. I do I love want, this as an idea. Yeah, I've worked on shows where, where they're like, we need a new name. Let's get yeah. together well, and brainstorm. That's true. That is, but, that's a good point. But also we've tested names. Remember we've done like 80 practicing on names or like oh, yeah. actually this name does, it tested better. So you're right. You're so right. I, take, I take my point back. But we are getting some answers in. So yes. we got Terminal 18. Very rarely happen. Ooh, Terminal 8. We've got Off the Ground, terminal Forever 18. Flying, Carpool, Terminal 18, The World Turned Upside Down. Now boarding love, fun. Love layover. Love layover. Love layover. Love layover. Just oh. Layovers. <laughs> love layover. <laughs> what, do you, what do you guys think? We just need to. I like. Up. I like. I kind of like Terminal 18 or Love Layover. I like love those. Terminal 18. I actually love Terminal 18. No, but it's gonna happen. Right. <laughs> I think Holy. A play on words. Terminal yeah. 18 is a lucky number too. Oh, I know. Prom airplane promotion. First yeah. idea. Airplane First idea. promotion yeah. with Delta. All right, yeah. so let's open the, the white airlines at Terminal 18. I, you have to find anyone it. who gets a flight from Terminal 18, enter to win free tickets. Yeah, a surprise and tickets. delight. A surprise right. and delight. So what we're gonna do is yeah. we're gonna open the whiteboard. Oh, where'd y'all go? There you are. And we're gonna do it. So we already have a few ideas for uh, some partnerships and some uh, content ideas. I, I just want to give a shout out to. Off the ground and forever flying. Those are two very oh, that's very nice. wait. Uh, like that, that that's a great mark. That's a that's a great um, tagline, right? Yeah. We can use that as a tagline. Copy lines. A, copy lines. Yeah. Copy line. So that's a good copy line. leave you forever flying. I did that. Yeah. I do copywriting too. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Aaron's an amazing copywriter. Um, yeah. All right, Terminal Eighteen. I, I have an idea that I wanted to run by, run you guys run by you guys. So. Um, I was thinking that it would be so fun to start this out actually with a surprise. And it's not even in a terminal. It's not in the, um, it's not in the uh, airport. It's actually, we're fast forwarding to the end of the show when they're on the road. And like, I wanna see like a little trailer of Norm and Lindsay, like in a YouTube trip, like, you know, in a, essentially in a car, like going down the road and like dust flying everywhere. And it's like, where are they going, right? 
But then it turns into like a potential like YouTube series where they're like trying to, we sort of go back in time, right? I love that. I think we need to put Zipcar in as a partner in this. All of the content is brought to you by Zipcar. Uh, also, also for, for press, um, something with James Corden, the, 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 well, the thing he does in singing while driving. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Very yeah, yeah. You know, Carpool getting karaoke. them in the car. What, yeah. if, what if we also have the points guy who does a lot of the airline points and yeah. he, he oh. interviews them as oh, well for the YouTube idea. series? Who, I, yeah, who's yeah. that? I don't know who that is. So the points guy is like this guy who does a lot of um, information on how you get points for airline points and credit card miles and things like that. He's like a character? Like in, in, in... He's like an influencer. Oh. He has a I big also, following. It would be so fun if like one of the songs was released as essentially in the car um it's it sounds amazing it's really beautiful but it's actually like one of the like the the banger song right the, between the two of them Introduced and it's released yeah it's released as a music video you know like a filmed music video and then we we roll out like three songs on spotify as like an ep what do you think how is it released in the car what does that mean do you mean i'm like sorry a the setting is the car oh, oh, oh. One, like that's one of the yeah, that's one of the pieces. I like that. It definitely put it on Spotify. Why not? Yeah, I love that. I love that. So, uh, exclusive Spotify release. I think oh, should we do? Should we do like a, a a live event where we can hear all the songs and do like a big press event and make it a big splashy event? What do you think? Yes, at the airport. It has at the to airport. Be at the airport. It has to be at how, the airport. How are we gonna it, get it's everyone at the there? Airport. We're gonna have to pay no, for we've their done Uber. That. We'll, we'll speak to our people in our promotions department. We're all like pretending like we're like our own agency, right? We'll <laughs> yeah, speak yeah. to the people in our promotions department and, um, you know, uh, uh, Mary Ann, uh, uh, you know, who's our connection over there. She can, <laughs> she, she, she can help us get our, our um, live, you know, sort of debut performance at the American Airlines terminal or the Delta. But what do they, the so when they get there, what's like, so they do a performance. I mean, I've seen those before, but like, what's the, what's the hook? Like, what's the, what's something that we can do that, that no one else has done there? Is it that like, it's, um, it's an AR experience that also sets you into like their, their different homes and their lives and where they were before at the airport? I think people love surprise and delight. So I think, you know, it could be a really great opportunity. Just make it about the music right have them have their performance and the people who are either coming off of their flight get free car rides to wherever they need to go to get back to their home right because that could be really cool yeah. will um yeah. and then when they're in the zip car i mean zip cars don't really have video but maybe how do we, how do we they get free car rides but wait, they get free car rides to the theater to buy tickets i mean yeah but how do we bring no but i just don't think anybody wants to go to the airport like what if we actually? Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Yeah. What if we bring the airport? What if we bring the airport to Times Square? Right. And make, make it make it a makeshift airport. Yeah. Experience. Right. Like and everyone like luggage and bags and like right. there's a fun flight attendants. Yeah. Oh. Singing flight attendants. Make it yes. really a spectacle. See, I'm 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 the one who's not following the rules. No one has a great experience at the airport, so bringing the airport to Times Square doesn't feel like something that I want. But what I don't want to go to the airport. I, I want to no, go. No, no, no. But she doesn't want to go to Times Square. To airport. <laughs> it's about, it's about, if what? I'm already at the airport and these people are singing and dancing and having a performance and someone comes up to me and says, hey, how are you getting home? Here's a free zip card to take you home. I'm getting online oh. and saying, oh my okay. gosh, I just yeah. saw this performance with Norm Lewis and Haley Kilgore and got a free ride home which i have a driver yeah. i'm good with my luggage i got the ac and then maybe we hit them with a discount code i mean i know discount is the terrible word but maybe it's going to be important them. post uh <laughs> post pandemic i think it's right? going to be absolutely key so that's my idea clear it up um what, but then, I, I, but then I really love that wondering is how do we get um like press who may not go to the airport? Is that what you're thinking, Jim? Who may not go to the airport? I what just, do we do for them? That's within that's within like Midtown. Yeah, also, I just maybe also. that's 
maybe it's two different things. Maybe they're two different worlds, right? Like maybe it's it, it, the airport is bringing people into the city and it's all about the show, but how do we create an, a, lot, a, di a live digital experience for people to get excited about the show before the show? Is it, do we go to Terminal 5 and do uh, a big music thing there? You know, like, is it a, is it a preview on the rooftop of the Dream Hotel or something? And it's like the, a music show and, you know, something that is really cool and exciting that would get people excited about the show before the show even comes on. What if you, oh, I'm sorry, Crystal. I just, I wanted to add very quickly. Uh, we had some, the chat has been live and uh, Mark Rostowski just uh, chatted. How about the TWA hotel partnership as a place for event marketing? Just thought I wanted to I share. love that. Yeah. I love that. Oh, that's, per that's perfect. I love that. We can definitely do some stuff there. Maybe we can have the music playing yeah. um, in, in, the, in, in the areas. I think that'd be really great. Um, what if we did have a Times Square performance, right? So now it's a little bit of the opposite of the idea, but it's the two things can happen at different times. If we had a Times Square event, they performed, we, ha we took out some digital billboards, we had that moment, the Spotify song is ready and being released. But we also did another surprise and delight, which I love. I wish I ever won one of these damn things. But... <laughs> while people are in Times Square, what if we got random people to um, decide whether or not they want to take this very same adventure, right? And be the same, like the three characters. So for example, I'm standing out there with, you know, a hundred other random folks, <laughs> social distance, I guess, I don't know. Um, and we pick three people to go on this same adventure and they get in their own car and we then create content for that, sort of like a road that's trip. Cute. Yep, I was just know. thinking of something. Yeah. Yeah. Scab Please, scab scab like, yeah. Honey, that's a million dollar idea. That's a great idea. Getting three people, three people who are strangers and having them win uh, some sort of experience together and capturing that and three people from three different places is, is beautiful. Put the cameras in the car. It's still a zip car. We bring in zip cars ass right back. Oh, excuse me. Zip cars. Back. <laughs> I zip car I is not a sponsor of this panel. <laughs> <laughs> zip cars. No, no, that's really there. exciting. It's it's really, like it's like the real life story of the musical. So so why that works is that it, it it's a fun idea, but it's also educating audiences as to what the musical is about. You know, it's about an adventure with three friends as they go across America, um, from uh, JFK to Hollywood, and you know, all the wacky things that, and the fun things that happen on that adventure. So even though, it, even though our thing wouldn't necessarily be like go across America, it might just be like, you know, go around New York for yeah. a day together or something like that, but that's yeah. the same idea. I think it should be a day trip, and what we do, maybe it's just two people, and you know, if the stars are down the play, Maybe Norm goes in the car with two and Haley goes in the car with two. So it's just sort of like this weird moment where they get to be with these celebrities for, let's say, two hours, three hours. Or yeah. Hour city. yeah. But no. it's still getting them into the mix. So we don't lose the perspective of ultimately what we're trying to sell, which is the musical. That's true. That would be and, so and fun stars. to do with. We want to have like, a connection with our stars. And so that's, that's a good way to get them out there. Right, and yeah, maybe it'd be so fun to do that as like an exclusive video series that we do with like travel and leisure. You know, some sort of way to be able to get into a wider audience on why this is cool. And maybe um, there's like a maybe there's a photo component where they can make it into postcards that they can send out to people as well, like during the trip. So yeah, oh, we have also, like a few lookout points or something. And also what posting is? all over Instagram and all over Facebook photos throughout the day. An, a lot, we can create a live Instagram story, you know, a live Facebook feed of it, uh, a, a Instagram story of this content that, you know, we'll, we'll, that'd be really cool too. Yeah. One more piece. So we launched with that little moment or however it comes into the timeline. But what if, if, our, if our Zipcar partnership is strong, <laughs> what if we have like one dedicated car that sits around different places in the city and people can have the opportunity to decide to take the ride, right? So no longer do we need Norm, no longer do we need Haley, we love you guys. 
but it's all about people coming together to have these shared experiences, right? Um, and continuing to grab more content. The other great thing about it is you have this um, low vehicle that's giving you promotion all around the city. So if there's no one in there, if the car's riding around the city, that's another form of advertising, outdoor yeah. advertising. I, I, wanna, I wanna shift if, if that's okay, because I really wanna try to get, I wanna try to convince musical theater goers and, and the casual musical theater goer that this is a choice for them because I think this next season is gonna be pretty insane. There's gonna be a lot of competition. And this isn't, while we love all of these people, they're not like the A++ superstar celebrities that, were, that have been gracing the stages of Broadway recently. So I wanna know, what, do we can, what can we do to like build um, and remind people of, uh, of Kirsten's work, of Lindsay's work, of Norm's work? Like, I wanna know, who these people are. I want to know why this musical, why now? Like, yeah. what is it about this? Yeah. Like, is that a series? Is that a, is that a, um, is it a, 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 a campaign in which we, we say like, is there some sort of heart message that we pull on? What do you guys think? Yeah, so the production is doing a, um, you know, a pre-Broadway run um, in Seattle. So I think that one, we can, we can go there and capture that experience, you know? Um, we can we can film we can capture stuff for commercial we can capture behind the scenes footage rehearsals so rehearsals yeah um, uh, we can capture performance while it's while it's over there interviews I think of course we need with Norm and Haley and Lindsay you know and there's a nice Kirsten. Sort of, and Kirsten of course there's do we nice know the director yet no not yet oh, okay. no director okay, um, no director yeah. um, uh, but, we, but and that's also a nice sort of generational thing because you have from Norm to Lindsay to Haley to, so there's to Kirsten to, 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 to Kirsten oh yeah yeah and, oh um, and breaking, this is also news, I, breaking news I heard Trip Coleman might be uh, considered as the director okay. according to the chat Ooh, boards just heard it. it from the news just oh, heard right. it so has he, done know, we'll has he done the musical yeah I think so yeah yeah yeah. What if what if we did like some Zoom interviews with uh, some of their family members in different states as well to get the connection, the national connection of where people come from and where they're going? Um, ultimately, New York is is one of the stops. Maybe also any of the stops along the way as well. Yeah, we need it, uh, Aaron. We need to, we need like a really great lo like copy line, like find your home or something like where it's like you don't like you're finding your home within each other, right? And it's like. And then that is like, we, we have these, have all of these people talk about like, where is their home and how they, how they've been uh, able to ground themselves, even though they've been in, you know, unable to travel, something like that. Yeah, it's something like, um, home on Broadway at last. Yeah, flying, yeah. You know, one other thing that I was thinking, um, that's a little to the left of this, most of the time, when you know a new show is coming it's all about getting the music out that's in the show and voting that but i think in the circumstances that we're in now and jim you were noting how do we get you know, these folks to feel like this show is for them under what i would be curious if you know the producer open to it is how do we get these really great singers performers to do songs that one can be done without any sort of like rights issues um but just sing some random songs that people have been loving this time of quarantine really show off skills now i know that's sort of of center but i think at the end of the day we need to remind people that we're dealing with powerhouse performances and former performers and you know they anything and do anything and just have a good time that's what they want to do so you know, we talked a lot about just in that poll that people were watching a lot of videos on youtube and sort of music music videos like that so i think just like reminding the people of their cred could be another interesting thing you know if you had norm lou sing, singing some fabulous song that people are getting into it, it was always something that was to push over the line for some producers but i think at the end of the day it's about thinking out of the box so i'd be curious to um hear the other things you know? how do you feel that how do you feel that would look um like i think it's i think it's as simple as you know finding 
it, you know, uh, um, finding a little stage and or even if they were in like intimate spaces, right? Because we're so used to people very intimate right now where they're in their home with a guitar or with a piano player, well, looking so at the camera. So then moment. it could be, it could be a series of introducing the songs like the Unplugged. Like right. in homes with a guitar, with just like a mic, just, you know, a, a, a sort of basic setup. I think you're right. I think we need a schedule. Um, we need to work backwards from opening and I need, we need to do a calendar event of like where are all of the places we're going to get these songs out. So we need to call press. We need to get them in the room to say, okay, we need a performance uh, uh, on uh, uh, this show, we need a performance on the Today Show. We're going to need a performance here. We're going to need, um, we're going to need to do some exclusives, and we need to bang out the drum of our best song and get people hooked. Like we need that waving through a window even before uh, the show. Actually, let's get a debut on the Obies, right? Like we'll, we'll start off there. We'll start and then and then roll out um, yeah. uh, uh, the song, the well, banger song, yeah. and then roll out from so there. So I hate to come from the first act. Flying, yeah. high. Flying, flying high, flying high in the sky, Beautiful. flying high. We, we need we need to get them to sing flying high. So Actually. I hate to cut us off, but we do have to wrap because someone needs the conference room that we're in, and <laughs> that is almost always the reason to stop a brain. This was booked. This was booked. Well, I don't know. <laughs> the new system. There's a new digital system. It's so, but yeah. anyway, this was. Winner. This, yeah, this was this great, winner. and this is a good start, and I'll come up with a lot of really lines. good ideas. I'll come up with new copy lines also. I think we know our, our to-dos and our homework assignments. Taking off spring 2021. Yeah, right. I love it. Beautiful. All right, so uh, let's go back to the main screen. Um, great. That was it, I was just getting, we were just getting started. I know, we I could know. go oh all God. night. <laughs> so we anyway. Talk about, brainstorm? I know, we didn't talk about our TikTok strategy. <laughs> I know. Oh, I know. So that's a typical brainstorm. That's a typical beginning part of a brainstorm. Normally we would go for at least an hour, if not sometimes half Multiple a storms. Um, and then we'd revisit and revisit. So that's sort, of, that's sort of a perfect example. But I know that a lot of people have a lot of questions and sort of uh, particularly on types of content uh, before shutdown and after. Um, so I really wanted to sort of lead into um, a discussion that sort of begins with um, sort of what sort of things, um, you know, what it's like to operate as digital marketers and content creators and creatives when theater was live and, and now that, it's, that, that we're taking a pause and what sort of the similarities are, what the differences are. I mean, a lot of the brainstorm that we had right now felt very similar to me. Um, but obviously there are differences because there was a lot of people talking about, well, we have to consider social distance. We're going to put three strangers in a, in a zip car. I mean, that's, that made my head spin a little bit, of course, but it's an idea and you don't want to stop yourself from an idea. So talk to me about what it's like, um, what it was like before and after and, and, and some challenges. I think it's really, it, it is a, ch it is a challenge, right? And, and we're, I, I, I'm currently in these conversations with shows about what, what we're going to do when we come back? How do we how do we deal with it? And I do think that beforehand we always knew that there was like there's an opening night and that there's a sort of normal social strategy that we could like. There's people go into a theater and it's and there's performers and they go out afterwards and the actors are available and there's not sickness and there's not all this to worry about. So I think our next thing it seems like as marketers our uh, marketers and content creators the big issue will be how do we make it so that it's safe and that it's going to be to be able to do this stuff to convince people that the theater is safe and that that's going to be probably number one goal is that like promoting HVACs and theaters promoting like testing and um the temperature checks and like back in the um I remember uh, looking up some old advertisements of Broadway uh, shows back in the, I think it was the 60s and 60s, maybe even earlier. They were advertising air conditioning in the summers because it was like, you can come to our theater and get air conditioning. And that was like a big point. So these are things that we'll just have to pivot. And I think that honestly, that, that we've got the cleanest theater, like we've got the safest protocols. We've got that, like, don't worry, you're gonna be fine. We'll actually be probably our number one uh, 
task as uh, as marketers and content creators, like creating a video about how the, the the virtual video about going into the theater and showing all the touch points of of safety and the spacing and like how the actors are being protected is probably our my my first job. It, so, what do you guys think? Yeah, I mean that's such a ooh, um, monumental question. Not really knowing where the world is going, um, but I think you know theater has been around for centuries, centuries, and centuries. It's in the DNA of the human spirit, right? So I think at the end of the day, it's not just about getting people into the theater, but it's about how do we get people enjoy her in all places and spaces until we come into our true understanding that it is safe right because what you want to have happen is one person goes in there and sick and you have to shut down again you know that's a, a real reality so how do we get the community to tune in and understand that we are creating they are you know all in the room where it is where creating theater as we speak and how we um, accept the how we theater. I, I think of, you know, the, what they do in the summer, every summer. What does out, outdoor theater look like, right? What does theater on look like? What does theater on Instagram look like? And is a show going to be, you know, ways two hours plus? Is it going to be less time on your phone? And, you know, um, so I think it's about how do we transform the power of the written word and the spoken word and how people can accept that until we are really um, play in space. Yeah, and, and, and I, I do think that it is a challenge right now to create content because our resources are very limited. It's, it's people in their, you know, in their homes um, and it, 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 it's sort of, help sustain us um, uh, for this last for these few months but eventually you know now people are starting to come outside more so I think that we'll be able to see content that is varied that's not just um, you know people inside their apartments um, so I think that but you know a theater will come back hopefully you know by spring of, there will be a vaccine uh, and and we know from the openings of museums uh, in town and, and other sort of cultural events, people want to return to things. So I, I, I doubt that when theater opens, it'll be empty seats. People will want to come back. And once there's a vaccine, they definitely will come back. Uh, and, I, and I think that, so that's kind of where I think content is now. It's sort of like a, we're sort of making it up really as we go along and it's a lot 100%. of trial and error to, to see what sticks and what doesn't. Um, and, and the remarkable thing is that people still want to be engaged with theater. So it's still, it's still keeping it alive, even though it's kind of at a simmer, let's say. Um, before, making content was like, sky's the limit. Like now it feels like it was totally freedom because we didn't have yeah. these constraints before. So The other thing that I want to add, just based off what Aaron was saying, I do think people really absorbing content a smart way, right? There was this point in time where, you know, it had to be eight seconds of content where a person's whole brain melt. Um, but I think now where people have to be home and stay still and they want to lean in a little more, there's there's more opportunity for online content that they will pay more attention to, um, which I think is a fantastic opportunity for anybody who is a creator, right? Where you yeah. can uh, come into someone's home and have them pay close attention, get to enjoy the brand, and then decide whether or not they want to take that further step as to going out and, and seeing. I'm, yeah. I'm totally, I'm totally with you on that, Crystal. Like, there's no doubt about it that like the, the view of the way content is made is going to change dramatically. Um, homemade content, this sort of like graininess will be just as accepted as the like hundred thousand dollar shoot that we do close your 
close your ears, any advertising agencies that are listening. But like, I think that there's going to be the real, the, the real thing will be about the best content. It won't necessarily because it needs to be on the best camera or the best uh, lighting equipment. It'll be about the best idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, and I, it's funny. A, a sort of um, uh, uh, scrappiness may be endearing and be more realistic now. But it's funny, Crystal. But you know, also, you know, going off what you're saying, uh, content really is king right now in theater land because it's all there is. So uh, yeah, it, it, yeah. This, this is this is like the moment for content to rise up because it really is the primary way that people are remaining engaged with 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 shows. Like yeah. I said, yeah. stuff that Jim is doing on. Uh, a girl from the north country for instance it's, it's, oh, it's oh my god people are loving those music videos like we just are we're sort of doing a visual ep which i think someone brought up we're just slowly rolling out the songs uh and the music videos to the to the album which is so perfect for the music and we've just really like people just love it is sort of authentically it's actually made by the actors for the for the people it's very like real and I think that's going to, I don't know if that's going to go away. I definitely think we'll love high quality stuff. No, I'm not saying that that's going to, I just, I just, it's really an exciting time right now that there's the, the freedom of making content is in all of our hands and we've all, we all can do it. We all have the platform. We just, yeah, it just needs to be um, a good idea. <laughs> I think one, thing, one thing to consider though, as well is, is the partnership aspect, right? So we still have to consider distribution of content yeah and who are partners someone asked a question i just wanted to point out which goes along with what we're saying which is in terms of content creation how important is video right so a lot of our video our brainstorm involved some video i would say we, we talked about other things as well but can there be content creation or um con uh, or or any other sort of strategy that involves things outside of uh, a video strategy i think we should talk about what are the what are the different forms of content you know, like, what, yeah. almost like what is content, you know, in, in the theater space? Oh my God, that is so fascinating. I, can I jump in? Sure. Yeah. Okay, so there's, uh, <laughs> I think that there could be a few different types of content, but like the, the big one that we see a lot in the theater is called hero content, right? It's very, um, it's very like the big splashy trailers, things that are at the, they're very high quality. They're really big, beautiful music videos, things like that. Then I think that the next level is hub content. This is like serial content, things that are regular, something that people can help with search and like, like help themselves understand things a little bit better, advertorials, things like that. And then the final is hygiene, which is like what I think Broadway's really good at. It's just sort of like lyric cards and like posting just because you have to post because you have to feed the monster. So um, it, that I'm exaggerating. There's a lot of really great hygiene content. It's just that sort of the, the three areas in which that uh, sort of content is based off of, at least from, from my perspective. Jim, I have a question. What's an example of that hub content? Like what are some tangible examples? The reason why it's, the reason why I love hub content is because it is actually in its form. It's like, if you go into a website and it's like, six ways to master master the ticketing system of telecharge there's a video in there and it's like hi are you trying to find yourself some information about telecharge mm -hmm. like you know it's like mm -hmm. that is technically hub content but also mm -hmm. hub content could also be in a container of like in the theater you know the the videos above the that you walk into that has like mm -hmm. upcoming trailers that's technically mm -hmm. hub content mm -hmm. and uh, it's all the things that exist to help facilitate um the information, like things that are like regular. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, we have some other questions too. Um, people talking about how to approach a sponsor or how to approach a partner, right? So, um, which I always think is hard to do, right? It's hard to do beforehand, after, afterwards. And, and I don't think there's an easy answer and I could delve into this as well because I've done a lot of sponsorship um, marketing and partnership marketing. Um, it's about relationship building and also um, figuring out sort of what we call trade, right? Things you have to offer. Um, so in the, in the case of a, of, a, of a theater live performance show, usually tickets are, are the most valuable thing other than cash um, money from the, the show, which are, is often not available. Um, and then in terms of, that's usually in terms of a trade partnership. In terms of a sponsor and getting actual uh, money from uh, a corporate corporation for the show, 
which is even a little bit trickier. Um, it's about developing really what sort of assets you have. So are you going to create um, a content series surrounding the sponsor? Are you going to create um, um, a live opportunity for um, the sponsor to have a hospitality suite at the theater or um, sort of uh, an after event with another partner at a restaurant or a hotel? Uh, so it's about really creatively coming up with different strategies to sort of engage different partnerships. So it really does go along with, with the content and the strategy and the voice of the show. Um, and it's not, you know, that's a really simplified answer. It takes years of developing relationships and figuring out who's who at different agencies that represent the corporate um, entity and also who, who in, inside the corporation manages the marketing uh, aspects. Are you having luck with LinkedIn? Like, is that, is, are people still connecting there in that way? Yeah, I think, like I think so a little bit. Um, and I think they're trying to um, ante up and become a more social platform these days. So I see a yeah. lot of people posting natively. That's another thing. That's a really good point is social media, right? So think about all the organic. Uh, a lot of times, you know, we're talking to people who aren't just Broadway, right? Who don't have a huge budget. So the organic nature of, of posting on social channels, don't forget it's not just Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. You have other, other avenues to go down. You have medium.com. You can write articles. You have LinkedIn, which is Pinterest. almost, you have Pinterest, Pinterest still. Pinterest, yeah. um, Google, you could do Zoom collaborations. You could, you know, there, you could be really inventive with the organic nature of content dialogue. Um, I'm all about the organic. It's just getting so hard because the alg algorithms really want you to spend money on advertising. <laughs> <laughs> so I, that's why I love, I actually really love TikTok and Pinterest uh, and, and LinkedIn and these things because they're sort of the secondary, and Reddit, they're secondary, the secondary social networks that you can actually generate a lot of interest from, from uh, organic. You can actually work on there and actually get a lot of people to, to, to come over to you. Do you, do you find, Jim, that on uh, like Reddit and Pinterest and TikTok that uh, you reach people who will become ambassadors to um, the shows? Yeah, it definitely depends on, it depends on it. But like, for example, Pinterest has been such an amazing place for search engine optimization. So for us, we're building websites so quickly for Broadway. Um, and if you're a new show, you're like, I got to get a website up. You actually don't show up on search. So things like Pinterest help build search engine optimization. So in some ways that helps people find you. Um, and then TikTok has been an incredible place for new discovery for new musicals. Like it's been a lot of music is on there. People are, are interacting with each other. They're doing duets. They're, sti they're stitching pieces of other content together. I know some people are on here on TikTok. Uh, and it's a very, uh, it's, it's an interesting place for this sort of new, new world of, uh, uh, of musical theater and theater, which is really cool. I was just going to add, Jim, I, I feel like something that I, I hope our network members at least try to research or Google on their own is, and you kind of went into it, is that each platform, especially for social media, has a different purpose. And it's important to understand what that purpose is and differentiate it um, as far as applying strategy to it. Because um, I find that, you know, Instagram is obviously different so, uh, from how you're going to use Facebook um, in, in the content creation. And that understanding those differences in the platforms is, is crucial, I think. Yeah. And I often tell people that are looking for gigs, right? If they were like, want to get into the business, I was like, actually be, I was like, I kind of don't care if you're really good at Instagram. Like, I really want you to be good at LinkedIn or TripAdvisor. Like, I want you to like, be really good at like Google Maps because like, that's where like some, especially as a potential employer or even a marketer, you can really do make a difference in a, in a, in a niche area of social media. You know, it's so funny because at, as I, you know, worked in this industry for so long and there are all of these different platforms in which one can manipulate and find ways to get people to come to it. I'm really just excited and I'm hoping that we can kind of focus back on the material and mm. what that means and how, because I think Jim, you were saying it and Aaron, you agreed, like people were talking about 
oh, we have air conditioning, so you can come and see this particular play. I'm really looking for the opportunity for the copywriters to really write compelling pieces and the videographers to really make compelling pieces um, that will get people in the space. And I know the distribution is really, really important, but there's so much noise out there, right? So how do you find where your audience can be, have this appetite for what you have and get them to that space? There's so many spaces, there's so many places. And as a person who's done this for a very long time, you can wear yourself out trying to be in every place, every space, every minute, every moment. And the dollars are just going away as you make yeah. more and more and more content. And Jim, you said earlier, feeding the beast, it's a bottomless belly. It is. <laughs> just be feeding I'm going to quote you on that. The, the, eating, the internet is a monster that must be fed. It must is. be fed. See more. Yeah. Feed me. Right. Yeah. But, um, we know how that story ends. Right. Yeah. So at the end of the day, how do oh, look. we re-educate? See, there we go. How do we re-educate audiences in this moment right now where they are sitting down and staying still to understand that theater is a community space that they need to respect to join in and pay for. Right? I think we've been in a space of for a very long time, and I've been known to do this myself, where we sell the sizzle and not the steak. And I think we're in a world now where we want to just know what it's about. What is it? What is the heart of the thing? Like I'm gonna I'm gonna risk my life for going outside and going into the theater. Like I better know what this is gonna be for my soul. Like is it gonna be good for my soul? Because I'm putting in this new world, I'm gonna be putting myself at risk. So I actually think we're I think you're right. And I think we will get there. I think we're gonna be away from the like razzle dazzle of like, you don't we we're not gonna tell you anything about the show, but just trust us that you're gonna love it. You know, it's like I don't think that's I mean, I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's the, that's the sort of age old battle of um, what Broadway advertising is. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's um, we can tease, but eventually audiences want to know precisely what am I going to spend $150 on, especially after in COVID world where if there's no vaccine, people are going to go out there and be risking their lives. So it's, 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 I wouldn't say sell the whole steak but sell the sizzle and a little taste. Yeah. yeah I mean, <laughs> I a little taste. Sampler. I mean, a little sampler. A sampler. So people know what they're getting into. <laughs> I want to put the story back in the storytelling, right? Oh, I mean, that's what theater yeah. is. The, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying from the point of the advertising, right? Because I think- Oh, 100%. From it's the point now. of the advertising, I want, I want to engage in a story before I sit my ass anywhere. It's I want. I mean, I mean, we we can say we can say, uh, Obie Award winner Kristen Child, uh, 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 Tony nominated Haley Kilgore, uh, 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 Tony has has Norm won a, has Norm yes won? not nominated. Yeah. It's nominated. A t t Tony winner Norm Lewis, a uh, 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 acclaimed Broadway star Lindsay Mendez in the new musical the Terminal term, term, uh, Terminal Terminal eighteen, 18. Uh, uh, and people will say like, oh, that sounds great. What's it about? So you we, we you yeah. need to have the you need to have the story in there. You know, it, all the hype it, is wonderful, but it's all it, it's really about uh, uh, three strangers meeting at, at Terminal 18 and set off on a road trip. They don't know where, but well, they really want to get there. Crystal, we've had this. We've had many many nights. All of us have had many nights of this conversation. It's like we're still trying to convince an old guard that there isn't just three stations anymore and one newspaper and four, and two radio stations that have thirty seconds and fifteen seconds and a this weight of a of a of a newspaper content is it's just changed. It's we have a million different ways and a million different platforms and different audiences for different things and it's really hard to convince people who don't still don't really engage in these things that are clients. I'm going to I'm going to bring up demographics because a bunch yeah. of people have questions about demographics and how we we sort of understand demographics and our targets per show um, how much re research goes into that and then I'm going to throw in how and maybe we don't know the answer but is that is that going to change and do we hope that's going to change once we come back together? What's the question? So the question is about demographics and how we how we find out what the demographics for each show is, and do we hope that might may change 
once, um, because the demographics have been a little more consistent in, in a, right? Okay, Chris. Of, of like all of Broadway. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's Broadway big, in particular, but theater in general. Question. But like, so. The formula has stayed the same, and right. we've gone after the same people. And that's why when you go into the theater, it looks the same. Um, and how do they come up with that? Only God knows. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, I mean, I think, you know, they look at sales reports and they look at zip codes and they look at where people are buying and, you know, the ages. And they said, okay, this is this group of people. But the reality is, you know, we are catering to baby boomers, right? And that could be, look, you know, in all shapes, forms, colors, and, 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 and those kinds of things. But I think if, theater wants to survive, right, post-pandemic and even before this pandemic, um, they need to start to uh, invite everyone. And I'm not going to say to the table, I'm going to say to the party, everybody wants to have fun, have everybody come and enjoy life that. and um, have a good time. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, from the perspective of making money, it is lucra lucrative. And then my last point, and I'll lean in a little further, is um, in order to do that, we need to tell diverse stories, right? Get back to the storytelling. If you want to have a diverse audience, you need to have diverse stories. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't have diverse stories, then you don't have diverse audiences. Yes. If you don't have diverse audiences, when those baby boomers go, bless their hearts, you will have a generation of people who are not interested in theater. Right, and it goes back to what Crystal and Jim were, were saying before, which is about the same platforms and the same outlets are being used to target the same audiences. And so if you change that up, you know, that also can be, give, yield different results. Well, what I find really interesting is, the, you know, the case study of Be More Chill, um, which which was a significantly younger crowd than the regular Broadway demographic, and its fan base was built completely on uh, digital platforms. So there is such a, um, there clearly is an audience there who loves Broadway. It's just finding the the most exciting ways to tap into them. And and Jim's right. It it, it the audience for Beamer Chill would not be reading the New York Times. And let's also, you know, talk about the elephant in the room. Pricing is a issue, right? We are coming off of a, a global economic collapse in some ways, right? Where are people getting the money to spend to go see these <laughs> diverse shows or not diverse shows? So I think at the end of the day, when you're thinking about demographics and audiences, we really, really, as a nation, have to find a way to make theater affordable. Now, when I say that, most people will say, well, you can see Phantom for $27 and you can see this show for $35. But, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it's not just about having those tickets in that one row for each week and people not having access. Um, it's really about how do we find a way to make it affordable and lucrative for the artists and the producers. Um, I don't have the answer, but, you know, someone or some people need to think about that. Yeah. Um, uh, and you know, the, the, the demographic question is interesting, particularly in the digital space, because uh, it seems that different demographics are on different platforms. Um, mm -hmm. So an older demographic would probably have a content-driven campaign on Facebook, um, whereas a younger demographic may be uh, TikTok, for instance. So then you would want to create your content, your digital content for the platform that reaches the, the, the demographic on that platform. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, let me just check if there are any more questions. I think we missed a, a few. Um, someone asked how we have a creative plan during the shutdown. I mean, I think it's, again, figuring it out as we go. <laughs> um, someone just asked the question that Aaron just answered, actually. So I just saw that. Um, someone asked a question about sort of racial injustice and different movements um, and how that affects content marketing um, or how that affects either content marketing now or when Broadway returns. What do you guys think about? either Black Lives Matter or other I mean, sort of coalitions. I, 
I, I, you know, that, that, that's a um, crucial question. Um, but I think in terms of advertising for shows, it's just making sure that there is inclusion of representation within the content that's being placed out there. Ian, I wasn't quite clear on the question. Kind of get the gist of it, but not the- I think not. it's a general question about incorporating um, what's going on in the world with, with your content, with your voice, I think. I, I might be rephrasing this person's question, but um, I think it's a general question about uh, Black Lives Matter movement and, uh, integrating into the content marketing of Broadway. I don't, listen, as a woman of color, as you can see, I think we're in this really slippery, slippery slope where we have some advocates and we have some people trying to be advocates and we have people who ain't advocates but know they need to be advocates because they don't want to be seen as not being advocates. So I think if people are truly just being human to what they are putting on stage, because I'm not, I'm not trying to see like nine to five all of a sudden being like, Black Lives Matter. Like, I'm not trying to see that. I don't think that's gonna be genuine. I think that's gonna be crazy and it's gonna make me feel like it's inauthentic. Um, but I think if it, it has its place, you know, it, it isn't about ignoring it, obviously, but, you know, it's really about what you're doing in the background. Are there black and people of color working on your marketing team, whether it's a show with black people or not? Yeah. Are there people of color helping create the set? Are there people of color helping come up with this um, uh, production, right? Where's the equity in that? And that alone will help with the Black Lives Matter movement. But when people all of a sudden start saying hashtag Black Lives Matter on a video post that has to do with the musical that has no black people in it or people of color in it, it becomes suspect. So I don't know if that really answers the question because I'm not quite clear on that question. But I think at the end of the day, it's it's not just about what you're doing in the in like in the the forefront, but what you're doing in the you know behind the scenes to to make things equitable for all people. If that answers the question. I don't know. It does a hundred percent. It does. Yeah. Well, I think I have one last question for all of you, which is a question that I ask. Um, in most of the recent episodes of Working the Theater, which is, um, and you, you've answered this uh, a bunch of times already, but um, what are some of your hopes for the theater as we, as we can come together, as we slowly are starting to come together? Good question. I hope everyone is kinder. <laughs> I hope everyone is more kind and more generous in spirit and more um, open to change and open to new opinions and open to new stories. I, I think this whole thing, this whole time has been really uh, a new beginning for a lot of people. And um, I hope that uh, it does inspire new stories and new, and just kindness in the theater. And like when you're next to a patron and in an advertising meeting and in a in in the office and with each other, I really do. That's my 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 biggest thing is because it was getting a little it was getting a little crazy. Ooh, that's such a great question, Ian. Look at you guys doing your thing on this. Okay, my hope <laughs> is that um, the theater can once again be a vehicle to tell all stories, and that it truly has the uh, transformative, cathartic essence that it's always had um, and that everyone is able to uh, enjoy the fruits of the labor because there's a lot of labor in creating theater uh, whether it's what you put on the stage or you know whatever marketing partnership that you uh, bring to the table or whatever at meeting you're in um, you know I think at the end of the day you know we all do this because we love storytelling and we, we, we see ourselves when we hear these stories. Um, and personally, I feel that it's gotten away from that, right? It's become more about what's the mega hit that we can get on the stage and what's the thing that's gonna, you know, become the next whatever. Um, and that closes the, um, the window for imagination 
So I hope we get back to that imaginative, mm. childlike fun that um, is truly theater. Um, I, I, uh, there's an interesting thing that will happen because of the pandemic. Um, when, when, um, you know, tourists are the, the, the predominant ticket buyer in the Broadway space. Um, and, and shows and ideas and campaigns are usually built for the tourist in mind. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that we have an opportunity now to begin to re-advertise Broadway to New York and all the citizens of New York. Um, that once again, for the lifeblood of the theater, we need to reach out to the people who live you know, within, within our, our area, uh, primarily because the tourists aren't coming in. Um, and I would hope that it's, we, we, we look at that area as something more than uh, wealthy people on the Upper West Side, you know, that, that there are many, many boroughs with many, many stories who have not been, um, uh, uh, as given an entryway into the Broadway space, um, the way that say Upper West Siders have, and um, how can we get all of these different New Yorkers to once again feel like Broadway is by and for New Yorkers, and the tourists can come and enjoy it also. We want you know we want their money, but uh, but right now right now we need to you know tap back into uh, the essence of Broadway being uh, uh, New York. Great. Well, I hope all those things happen. Um, <laughs> it's going to take a long time, um, but I wish all the same things as well. Um, and I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for sharing your thoughts and your wisdom. Uh, feels like old times. Um, yeah, it does. And uh, I hope we can continue these conversations and inspire other people. Um, I'm, I apologize if we didn't get to your question. Uh, hopefully we will at another point. Um, Melissa and Alicia, do you have anything you'd like to add? I just want to echo my thanks. I mean, watching that brainstorm was incredible. <laughs> I was trying to keep up on the, uh, on, the, on the whiteboard side. So thank you guys for sharing your insight and your time. Uh, thank you, Ian, for leading the conversation and this wonderful session. And thank you all uh, for being here tonight, for spending this evening with us, learning about content creation and getting a peek inside of what a brainstorm looks like. Um, that's, that's all I've got. <laughs> Great. All right. Thank you, everyone.